So today we will build a sort of a pad voice that will sound like this. As you can see, we will build it totally from scratch, but I will use my Arturia keystep, as you can see it here, to play the voice. Um, you can use other controllers, of course, and also sequence this from uh, VCV or from your DAW if you have the VCV Pro version. So first of all, let's start with an oscillator and we will use the VCV VCO. Let's send the pulse wave through a filter. I will use tangents in this case, and I'm also using color coding. Um, so red will be audio. Let's add also a VCA and send the filter to the VCA and add also an envelope, an ADSR envelope to control this VCA. CV will be green. This will go to the output, right? A very basic subtractive voice. I will connect the key step to the envelope. So the gate output, uh, gates are blue. The gate output will go to the gate input of the envelope and the volt per octave, which will be yellow, will go to the volt per octave of the VCO. Right, and now I can play this voice a bit. Right, just like this. Okay, so now, first of all, let's have another envelope for the filter. So we'll have a second envelope that will control the filter. Um, again, I will connect the gate and the envelope will go to the cutoff CV input. Right, let's change the settings a bit. Um, I would like to have a bit more release for the VCA envelope. Right, and then take the sustain of the filter envelope a bit down, so it will sustain on a different level than the amplitude, but the decay and the attack a bit up. Right, something like this. Okay, now I will also connect the retrigger from the MIDI module to retrigger the envelopes. Again, this will work with other MIDI controllers and also if you do this from a DAW, this just make sure that the envelope will always be active also when I'm holding notes. Okay, and now we will add some movement and I will use a random signal. This will come from walk. Um, it will output smooth random signals, right? So we will send this to the PWM, to the pulse width modulation input of the VCO, right? So it will sound like this. Right, just adding some movement to the pulse width of the pulse wave. Right, something like this. And now let's add a bit more character with noise. So I will use the noise module, let's put it here next to the ADSR, the noise module from VCV, and I will send white noise to the resonance input of the filter just to add a bit more uh, noise and character to the sound. So let's see how this will sound like. Right, just a bit. We will also send white noise to the FM input of the VCO to add a bit more um, instability, right? So the noise will go to the FM input and let's have a listen just a bit, right? Change the filter. Very nice. Now this is more or less it for the sound design of the voice itself. Of course, you can experiment with other oscillators, adding more oscillators, different filters and so on. But let's add now the magic behind this patch. So I will use the Bog Audio ADDR sequencer. 
which will look like this. We will use also an LFO to clock this sequencer, right? So just the LFO from VCV. The square output will go to the clock input of the sequencer. Maybe make this a bit quicker, right? So it will look like something like this. And now I will set maybe two steps to be a um, positive one volt, right? So if I right click a step, I can enter exact values. I enter one. Let's have another one, maybe step six, right? Another one volt. Now, as we know, we have the volt per octave standard. So each volt is one octave. So basically this sequencer will take the notes an octave up on those two steps. Now we need to mix the notes coming from the MIDI module with the sequencer. So we will use the mix module from VCV. This will just mix the signals at um, unity gain. So I will send the volt per octave from the MIDI module and then back to the oscillator. So now we have basically the same and also the output of the sequencer to the mixer. Right, and now let's see if I hold one note. Right, you can hear that the, this note will go up in octave on those two steps. Right, but I want to make this a bit more organic. So we will use the random module from VCV that will look like this. I will use the LFO to clock it as well, right? It has a trigger input and use it to modulate the rate of the LFO via the FM input. So with each cycle of the LFO, the rate will change. Now, by the way, if you are not sure what an LFO is doing or what FM means, I have a series of videos all about the basics of modular synthesis in VCV2. So if you are interested, there's a link in the description. So now let's use the random module to modulate the rate of the LFO again through the FM input. FM is frequency modulation. Frequency is also rate. So I'm going to use this to modulate the frequency of the LFO. And now have a listen to this. Again, just one note. <laughs> It's a bit, a bit less rigid with more movement. We can make this even a bit, a bit more something like this. Right, and now let's take it another step forward and add another ADDR sequencer. Again, I will clock it with the LFO, I just drag um, another cable. Now in this case, let's have seven steps instead of eight. And I will want this sequencer to bring the pitch up by seven semitones, which is a perfect fifth. Um, so if we have the note C, it will move it to the note G. Now I already tested this, so we don't have to go through the process. Basically 0.585 volts is seven semitones. So let's have two steps with this value. Let's say step one, again, right click 0.585. And let's say step number five, 0.585. And again, we have to mix this in, through the mixer here, right? And let's have a listen to this. Again, I'm holding just one note. Right, so if I play a few notes. you can hear the effect that we are getting. Now, just for a bit of stability, let's connect the gate from the MIDI also to the reset input of the LFO. So the LFO will reset itself with, uh, with each new note, right? So the gate output will go to the reset input. And now let's take this even further and add another ADDR sequencer. And again, I will connect the clock. I just hold control and I grab another cable. Now let's set it uh, to have five steps, right? So we have eight, seven, and now five. 
And we will have one step set to one volt, so it will take our voice even another octave higher. And since they all have different lengths, they will meet each other at different places. So sometimes it will go one octave up, once an octave and seven semitones, once two octaves, and so on. Right, so let's say step number three will be again one volt, and this will go again to the mixer. And let's have a listen to this. Right, you can really hear the effect. Now, just in case we can add a quantizer after the mixer to make sure all of the notes we are playing and all of the notes that are being transposed will stay in a certain scale because, because we have these seven semitones, sometimes the note will be transposed to a note that is not in the scale that you are playing. Um, right, so I will add a quantizer after the mixer. The signal will go first to the quantizer, and let's set a scale, I have here C, let's say I want C minor, so let's say C, D, E flat, F, G, and B flat, that's enough, I don't need um, A flat as well, right? So now let's have a listen, right? So if I hold A flat, we will not get this note, and also not the transposed, right? So seven semitones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? And now for the really fun part, let's add delay and reverb to put everything in context and really put this sound together. So for the delay, I will use Tap Dancer from Flag, right, which will look like this. Let me just make some space here. Right now, Tap Dancer has Drive, which is quite interesting, and also Ducking, so whenever the notes will play, the level of the delay will go down, which is quite, quite an interesting um, effect. And for the reverb, of course, I will use plateau. I mean, there, uh, there is no really other choice. <laughs> right, so now let's send the voice to the delay and from there as a stereo signal to the reverb and then to the output. Right, let's set things up. So the tempo, maybe I will take it. Let's, you know what, let's first listen to it as it is. Right, so we can add some drive, we can take the tempo a bit up, maybe 160, something like this, maybe add some modulation also for the delay, just a bit, again, ducking, and maybe a bit more feedback. This might seem like it's polyphonic, but it's not. This is totally monophonic. I can play only one, let me go back here. I can play only one note at a time, but because of all of the transposition from the sequencers, it sounds a bit polyphonic. Right. And now, of course, let's add some reverb, because reverb is life. Yes, very nice. Now this is the basic patch, but we can make it polyphonic and get something a bit different. So again, until now it was just one note at a time, but we can turn this patch into a polyphonic patch and we can have many notes playing at once, playing chords and being transposed individually. 
Okay, for this we will need to do a few things. First of all, and this will work the same in DAW, this will work the same with other MIDI controllers. Um, in the right-click menu of the MIDI to CV module, we have to select how many um, channels of polyphony we want. We can go up to 16. I'm going, uh, going to go with five, but of course you can choose as many as you want. Right, All you can already you can see the cables changed a bit. Right, now before the delay, I'm going to add the sum module from VCV. It will look like this. This will take polyphonic signals and will sum them into a monophonic cable or polyphonic cables and sum them into monophonic cables. Now this, the tap dancer can also do by itself, but the sum module has also level control, which is quite helpful because um, five voices playing at once can get quite loud. Right, so I'm going to connect the signal to the poly um, input. You can see we have five channels and from there back to the delay. And here you can see the cable is again monophonic and the rest of the chain will be also monophonic. And um, so we save some CPU, although tap dancer and plateau will anyway sum the polyphonic signals in the input. Okay, now this is not all. We need also to make the ADDR sequencers polyphonic because until now they are monophonic, which means that only the first channel will be transposed. This is not what we want. We want all of the five channels to be transposed separately. Right, so in the right-click menu, I guess you can change the, from which input it will take, uh, um, it will become polyphony. In this case, it's clock input. So what I will do, I will multiply the clock to be polyphonic. There is a module from Bog Audio called Polymult. I'm sure there are other modules that do this. And it will take a monophonic signal, right? The monophonic LFO, the monophonic clock, and it will multiply it. In this case, let's choose five into five channels of polyphony, right? So now if I use this signal to clock the ADDR sequencers, again, they will recognize that they should be polyphonic through the clock input, which means that now we have them also polyphonic. And now each voice will be um, polyphonic, um, not polyphonic, but it will be transposed, sorry, it will be transposed separately. Right, so let's have a listen to how this will sound like with polyphony. to stop myself this can go this can go on <laughs> for a long time i'm sorry but it sounds really nice and um, again this can work great also in a daw That was it. The patch file and the selection file you can load into your projects will be available in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.